Oh, huh. we've had a bunt splosion. <laughs> Welcome back to My Cupcake Addiction. I'm Elise Strawn and today I'm gonna to be showing you how to make these adorable, no-bake, pumpkin spice cheesecake bites that are made even more adorable because they're in tiny little pumpkins. The things you'll need to make your pumpkin spice cheesecake bites, you're gonna just need either orange candy melts or you can color white chocolate using a little oil-based food coloring. You'll need some brown sugar, some whipping cream, a little pumpkin puree, and I actually just boiled and mashed my own pumpkin because I didn't have access to canned pumpkin puree. Cream cheese at room temperature, a little vanilla essence, some ground cinnamon, boiling water, ground nutmeg, ground ginger, and ground cloves. I'm also gonna use a little bit of green food coloring, and this is actually the same recipe as the one that I use in the pumpkin spice latte parfaits in the Sweet Celebrations cookbook, which came out just a couple of days ago. It's basically the exact same recipe, except I'm not doing the biscuit base. You can see those gorgeous little parfaits that we then put into our little fall-themed or rustic-themed chapter. This is where your miniature bunt tin comes in. These are about an inch across, but you can make these bigger or smaller depending on how big you want your little cheesecake bites to be. Melt down your orange candy melts or your colored white chocolate, and then put about a half a teaspoon in each cavity and use the back of the spoon just to drag that candy melt or that chocolate up so it's kind of a little thicker around the top edges. Pop those ones off into the fridge to set. Once they've set, they should pop out nicely, but if for any reason they don't, you can snap freeze them for five minutes, just pop them straight in the freezer, and that will help them to release really easily. And then pop them out and take a warm skillet or fry pan, I'm using a mini, and just use that to heat up the top edge of two pumpkins, then join them together. That's gonna to essentially make your little pumpkin. I'm using one of my little beta ends because it's about the right size. Again, just heat it up in a little bit of boiling water. And I'm just gonna poke that through the top of one of my little bunts so that my pumpkin is essentially whole with a hole in the top. They're kind of adorable. So you should have something that looks like this, a joined together hollow pumpkin with a little peeking hole in the top. We can set those off to the side and we're gonna first of all, put our brown sugar into your boiling water and let it sit for about 15 minutes. I kind of love brown sugar. I love the flavors that it adds to a recipe. Caramelly, rich, and delicious. That's gonna dissolve all of your brown sugar so you don't get any grains or anything crunchy in our smooth cheesecake. And then I'm gonna add in all of my spices and my vanilla. So pumpkin spice is not a big thing in Australia. And honestly, until I'd spent so much time in the States, I didn't realize how good it could be. But because of that, pumpkin puree is not something that we can find year round. It's not readily available. So for anyone that's not in the States in the fall seasons, I just took regular pumpkin, chopped it up and steamed it so that it was a little bit softened and then mashed it. You have pumpkin puree and we didn't need to use anything out of a can. So all of my spices are in. I'm gonna use my electric mixer and I'm gonna whiz that together on a high speed until it's really nice and creamy. Mix that for about five minutes and then I'm gonna start slowly adding in my brown sugar syrup while my mixes are going so that it distributes evenly. This doesn't need to be cooled or anything. The sweetness. Yum. All right, this smells amazing. It's all cinnamony and delicious. You can pop that one off to the side and then we're gonna semi whip our cream. When you semi whip cream, you wanna make sure that it is just thickened, but it's not leaving beta marks in the actual cream. So when you pick it up with a spoon, it should essentially fall off the spoon and you shouldn't be able to see the trace of your beta after it's been whipping through. It's a semi-whip, not a full whip. This is a perfectly semi-whipped cream. So you can see there it's thick and it's full, but it still essentially drips off the spoon. That's what you want. It's not yet leaving beta marks. Even as we mix this through, it's gonna keep on whipping in the folding process. And the last thing we want here is over whipped cream. So in goes my cream to my pumpkin mixture, and then fold it through using big sweeping motions, which means you can scrape down the sides of your bowl, and you don't put too much pressure on that cream and risk over whipping it. You wanna fold that through until you don't see any more white streaks. 
If you're using fresh pumpkin, you are gonna have a slightly different consistency to if you do use the canned pumpkin. Because it's fresh and we've made it ourselves, it is a little more natural and we're sneaking vegetables into our dessert, but it just doesn't have that super processed smoothness of a can of pumpkin puree. So I've got a piping bag and I've just got any piping tip that's round, but it has to be smaller than those little holes. It has to be able to fit inside or else you can end up with a mess on your hands. So fill your pumpkin spice cheesecake mixture into your bag and then we're just going to pipe it in till we fill each of our little pumpkin buns. As you're filling these, we want to make sure that we get cheesecake in that top section. So put the nozzle right inside the cheesecake and put a bit of pressure on it until it just starts to come out the top. Even after it starts to come out the top, we kind of want to force it up into the top of our little buns. That batter is going to make 24 of those little cheesecake bites with a tiny bit left over. You can obviously make half if you want only 12, but normally these are good things to make for parties, so I figure 24 is a good number. I'm going to put the last of my batter, whatever's left over, into a bowl, and I'm going to colour it with a little bit of my green food colour paste. I've also got a leaf piping tip, so you can use any size here. This one's quite a large one. It's essentially a piping tip with an opening and just like a V in it. This is going to make a little leaf shape. Put your green cheesecake mixture into your piping bag. Because I want this to set a little bit, I'm gonna twist my piping tip here and also here to kind of trap that cheesecake inside. I'm gonna put the whole lot into the fridge. This mixture and my pumpkin spice cheesecakes for one hour. That's gonna let everything firm up, make this pipeable and have those pumpkin spice cheesecakes at optimum temperature to serve. Once you've patiently waited your hour for your pumpkin spice cheesecakes to set and that cheesecake mixture to firm up a little bit, you can pipe a small leaf on the top of each of your cheesecake bites. The tip's gonna do most of the work here for you, so literally just squeeze it out and then taper it off to a point to look like a little tiny leaf or a little stalk. If you don't have a leaf piping tip, a snap seal bag's fine here, just a little greenery helps. Serve those chilled to your guests and watch everybody get super excited when they realize their pumpkin cheesecake bites are actual pumpkins. These are adorable, they're easy to make, they're no bake, and they're absolutely perfect if you love pumpkin spice. If you've never given it a go like I hadn't, try it, it's actually really delicious. If you're not already subscribed to the channel, make sure you do for two new videos every week. And as always, thanks very much for watching.